and you know they're starting to see for example with the casinos the direct relationship between uh, lost revenue from the casinos and of course monies to run the state and uh, in some of the information literature that I've been uh, going through uh, some comments where um, it's it would be like and I'm paraphrasing it would be like it's like shooting ourselves in the foot you know you're, we're losing money for grades K through 12 and at the same time we're putting huge dampers on uh, you know profits of, of casinos for example where, where we're getting a lot of revenue from and um, or at least where we were getting a lot of revenue from and you know there's implications and we're gonna have to take a look at that and I think um, you know cooler heads after very various emotional exchanges and debates are, are starting to prevail uh, in Japan for example you know they're saying okay look business owners we want you guys to take notice of non-smokers rights and since a lot of the business hadn't been doing so okay we're going to propose a nationwide ban so that gets everyone's attention and then uh, they say okay okay wait a minute and it's unfortunate that people have to be sometimes uh, drugged to the table kicking and screaming and that goes as well for our politicians they don't always do what what the people want or require or what's best sometimes laws are instituted and things and they kinda have to be uh, held accountable and and be drugged to the table so in this instance uh, you know they said okay uh, well wait a minute let's take a look at this now look here's what you need to do you need to uh, make some type of adjustments uh, create non-smoking areas and of course we all know that uh, four tables 18 feet away and then four tables 18 feet away on this side sep separated by nothing but air and people is not the answer to the question <laughs> that that makes virtually no difference whatsoever so you know people with rational minds can sit through sit here and uh, and and talk about some of these issues and and come up with reasonable solutions um, the vented ventilation systems and things like that though absolutely in some cases in some institutions might be very costly uh, are a very very good solution uh, to a lot of the problems and if business owners look at lost revenue versus how much it costs to implement uh, some type of additional systems uh, uh, I think over time they might see that it's probably worth the investment to do so I think it's, uh, it's actually to the smokers benefits as well uh, to be in an environment that's that's humidified and ventilated properly so uh, it continues to be a hot bed and hot issue and they're seeing the correlation with the jobs but yet when the uh, cigar taxes and things were went into effect uh, they weren't thinking about too much about the couple of hundred thousand people in about three countries uh, that make their living off of uh, earn their livelihood off the uh, premium cigar industry and uh, so you know the uh, the circle turns and we'll see uh, we'll see what happens how this uh, continues to shake out in 2011 but we are happy to have you guys uh, along with us. This is CigarChatRadio.com. I'm your host, Lee Thomas. Boy, it's such a rich hobby. So many fun things to cover each week in uh, the art of cigars, the last great gentleman's hobby. How about the cigar ban? Has that one been put to, put to rest yet? Catherine, the uh, Russian queen, I just did not want to get her fingers dirty, so she came up with the cigar ban. Or was it during the time of the dandies? You know, the white gloves. These guys are strolling down the street, looking very aristocratic. And one of your buddies stop you and say, hey, let's fire up a stick. So you go, huh, pray tell. I should uh, deny you such the pleasure of my company. While uh, we both indulge in a fine cigar. So they light up some sticks. Hmm. Maybe their gloves get dirty while they're smoking sticks. I'm not exactly sure why. Uh, so let's say your gloves get dirty. 
I don't know. I'm a dandy, man. I cannot have dirty gloves. <laughs> right? Because those guys were all about <laughs> looking cool, fashion, trend setting, right? That would be like walking into Brooks Brothers today and saying, hey, uh, yes, uh, I like a pair of those uh, handy dandy Brooks Brothers smoking gloves. And then you go out and, uh, you know, you get them dirty. And, I know. I'm not getting my Brooks brother handy dandy smoking gloves dirty. It's not happening. So I don't know if I could give the nod to those guys during that time period. Uh, maybe it was Gustav Bach, uh, the first cigar bands, uh, ingenious marketing tool, if this is true, the Dutchman. I don't know. Got my attention over a hundred and some years later. One of my first cigars when I got into the hobby was a Bakke car. And I loved it because I loved the cigar bands. I didn't know that much about cigars. I like Maduros. I like Robustos. It was an, it was a box of uh, box press Maduro Robustos from Baki Ka. Uh, very inexpensive cigars. Uh, good for the price. Uh, but I just love the band. So uh, I don't know. I may have to give Gustav the nod. And uh, what do you guys think? I don't know. What about some of the cool quotes? Uh, King Edward VII. Gentlemen, you may smoke. Yeah. Mark Twain. If there are no cigars in heaven, I shall not go. I don't know, Mark. There, uh, I think there's heaven on earth right now. There's so many great cigars being manufactured all around the world. Uh, such a rich hobby. And uh, in fact, that reminds me of uh, family history, legacy, cultivating, growing tobaccos. A lot of those things we cover here in the art of cigars. Reminds me of my friend uh, Marvin from uh, Reno, Nevada. He owns uh, Dimas Cigars. And uh, a master roller, master blender. I've sat with Marvin and watched him roll cigars. Uh, and um, he uh, grew up around the Padron factory. His grandmother worked uh, at the Padron factory. Uh, Marvin grew up around the factory from the time he was probably four or five years old. And he and his partner both actually rode the Padrones and also Fuente Fuente Opus X cigars. And boy, I tell you, one day I was sitting there and got a chance to bury myself, my face, in, <laughs> in actually <laughs> diving into a, a bale of uh, a rich Maduro wrapper leaves from uh, Nicaragua. It wasn't probably such a bad idea, but no, I just got to bury my face in a, in a bag of uh, Maduro wrapper leaf. Uh, Lijero from uh, Nicaragua and uh, boy it was just fantastic so I don't know hey we're out of time for this segment and uh, we'll have to uh, stay tuned for uh, the perfect match light my fire around the corner and picture this we got lots more to talk about here on uh, CigarChatRadio.com I'm your host LT and we'll be back in one and one for the next segment of Cigar Chat Radio